Hello everyone and welcome to Germany! Finally made it back to Germany and there are very few things that really shocked me coming back here. I would call it a reverse culture shock and today I have 10 things with me that I want to share with you and tell you about the 10 moments I realized that I forgot being German. Because living in Turkey for a couple of years definitely does something with you because you are adopting the Turkish lifestyle, you get used to the Turkish manners and of course the Turkish habits in Turkey and you totally forget your German self sometimes. My mom was a bit surprised as well as I was. So let's look into the box. These trousers are actually from the DDR. Number one, you don't see plastic bottles as a way of income anymore. In Germany you have to separate the trash by yourself otherwise you will get fines for it. So for the plastic bottles there actually exists a fun system. That means whenever you buy water or anything else to drink and it comes in a plastic bottle, you pay like 25 cents extra for each single bottle and that's quite a lot of money. Sometimes it's more than the actual price of the drink. So when you get home and the bottle is empty, you do not throw it away. You actually have a separate bag for all your plastic bottles. And when this bag is full, you go back to the supermarket. I have some plastic bottles here and together we're going to give them back to the supermarket now. Let's go. We are almost there. So we are going now to the Leergut Anname, which will take the plastic bottles. This is the Leergut Anname. And there are machines that take your bottles, your plastic bottles, and you'll get a piece of paper. With this piece of paper, you have to go to the cashier and the cashier will actually give you the money back for the bottles that you paid beforehand. Some people might think this is quite a lot of work for this money, but for Germans, it's a great way of separating our trash to feel motivated. So when I came back to Germany, I drank my bottle of water and I can't believe it, but I threw the bottle away. I totally forgot that we have a fun system and absolutely didn't think about it. My mom looked at me like I was crazy. Do not throw away any plastic bottles in Germany. It's very valuable. Number two. Tap water is drinking water. This is the best thing about Germany in my opinion, that wherever you are, wherever you go, you know that you can just get tap water and drink it. I know you can also drink tap water in Turkey or Istanbul, but still it's not always that safe and most people actually do not drink it from the tap. They order their water home or they just buy it. Do you drink tap water in Turkey? So when I came back to Germany after over a year, I was home, I asked for a water and my mom actually gave me tap water. First, I was a bit concerned. <laughs> I was like, can you drink that? And she was like, yeah, of course you can drink that. So I, you definitely forget like these simple things of life that you can just drink the water from tap. I really appreciate that you can safely drink the tap water here in Germany. Number three. You cross the street even though it's red. Whenever you see a red light, you just stop. Doesn't matter if there is no car, if there is no traffic at all, no people, you're the only person outside. But if it's red, it's red, okay? You cannot cross the street. And in Turkey, it's just the other way around. So it doesn't matter how much traffic there is, if it's green or not. As a pedestrian, you would always try to get to the other side of the road. Doesn't matter if it's red or green, as long as you take care of yourself, you can just cross the street. But here in Germany, you can make sure that you will be in trouble. So do not cross a street when the lights are red in Germany. You suddenly feel bored on a Sunday. Sunday is supposed to be a day where you absolutely do nothing. On Sunday, people do not go to work and they definitely do not go out for shopping or to the supermarkets because everything will be closed. Whilst in Turkey, people work 24 seven, the shops are always open, especially on the weekend. It was so weird for me to be back in Germany and 
to not be able to do anything on a Sunday except for rest, which the day is actually for. You have to be a little bit more creative, especially during the Corona time. And your Sundays in Germany actually look a lot more different than your Sundays in Turkey. Using a VPN. As you all know, there are a lot of websites blocked in Turkey, but also there are a lot of websites blocked here in Germany as well as anywhere else in the world. So in Germany, Saibinden is blocked, for example. Why? And in Turkey, my favorite German shows are blocked. <laughs> so I really need a VPN to get my life together. So what a VPN does is very easy. It actually tells your phone which location you are in right now. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I just want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. I used them before and when they wrote me, I was just like, yeah, I want you. So why is a VPN so crucial? It allows me to access websites that I cannot access outside of Germany. And now that I'm in Germany, I want to access websites that are only accessible in Turkey. So if you don't use a VPN yet, please go to NordVPN and use the code TRAVELCOMIC to get a two-year plan and an additional month with a huge discount. You're welcome. You forget to wear a seatbelt. This is unfortunately very true, but the first times I got into a car here, out of habit, I did not put on my seatbelt, especially not when I was sitting in the back seat. <laughs> These were just moments when I realized, oh my god, I really forgot how to be German because you cannot move the car without wearing your seatbelt and as a driver you make sure that everyone else in the car wears a seatbelt. In Turkey it's not quite the same. To be honest, sometimes I don't even have the option to wear my seatbelt. Whenever I'm in a taxi in Turkey I always tell myself I will wear a seatbelt. But how many times was I simply not able to wear a seatbelt because there were no seatbelts or the seatbelts were like hidden behind the seats. This is definitely a huge difference between Turkey and Germany. How people are using the seatbelts. Some Turks, they put the seatbelt behind their back into the thing so that it would not make the peep sounds while driving. <laughs> Everyone should wear a seatbelt. You freak out when people stay on the left side of the escalator. <laughs> I just realized it today that when I was in a shopping center, people were standing on the left and right side everywhere on the escalator. And it really like freaked me out. I was like so nervous inside of me. I was like, what if someone wants to rush upstairs? What if someone like can't find his or her way? In Turkey, it's very strict that people have to stand on the right side so that people who are in a rush or want to walk up they can pass on the left side. And this rule does not exist in Germany or at least it's not as strict here. People usually would stand just wherever they want to stand. And if you are in a rush or you have to hurry up and you are using the escalator, then you have to ask the people to say, hello, can I please pass? Or you would just use the normal stairs anyways. You feel lonely when going out for a walk. I'm out for a walk now, it's pretty quiet, very close to Berlin and definitely no animals out here. In Turkey you would never ever feel lonely because there are so many street cats and dogs and people outside. But here in Germany when I went out for a walk, like four minutes and hours i didn't see any other person i didn't see any other animal but it's beautiful it's just very quiet nice beautiful silent i like it it's definitely a little bit more quiet here there are no cats or dogs outside you always want to bargain <laughs> yes this is definitely something that just happened to me i was at a market and i found something super beautiful and i asked how much is that she gave me a price and i said okay let's make a special price let's do like 10 euros instead of 15 euros and she was looking at me and she was like no we have fixed prices you don't bargain here <laughs> When I first came to Turkey, I was so annoyed of all the bargaining going on at the bazaars and markets. And it really overwhelmed me that you have to 
play this game of bargaining to actually buy something when it can be so quick and efficient to just have a fixed price for everything everyone pays equal amount and you can just take it and you're happy but living in turkey i really understood the fun of bargaining and that it kind of brings a conversation with the vendor it's like just so much fun and there's much more communication than here in germany so this is something that i realized i forgot being german <laughs> you feel weird without islak mandiel i just got so much used to islak mandiel in turkey that when i came back to germany you cannot find islak mandiel at all whenever you go out when you go to a restaurant in the plane or wherever they will not give you islak mandiel because it doesn't belong to our culture like we don't know what that is the first time i saw that in turkey i was so confused I didn't know why people used Islak Mandil when you can just get up and wash your hands. But now I understand like how important Islak Mandil is, not only to clean your hands, but to clean everything around you, the table, your shoes, your neighbor's face, whatever. Whenever I eat or especially when I'm in a restaurant in Germany, I really, really wish I had the Islak Mandil next to me. Just before I eat or after I finish eating, I want to have an Islak Mandil. I can also understand that it's way better for the environment, of course, to not use an Islak Mandil, but this is just something that I got used to so much. Life without Islak Mandil. <laughs> Alright, I have a few more items in my bucket, but these are for later. I hope you enjoyed this video and definitely let me know if you ever experienced a reverse culture shock. Thanks everyone. Bye. Grüß, grüß.